Hey, welcome back. I'm Erica Bell. You may know me as a home organizer, but I am also a travel enthusiast and I'm so thrilled to be talking to you guys today about how I am planning for my next trip. How am I preparing for this next trip? And the trip is to the Paris Olympics. I could not be more excited. This is a bucket list thing for me. I've always wanted to go to the Olympics. I get jazzed up for the Olympics. I don't care if it's summer, winter. I just love it. I love all things Olympics. And I've also never been to Paris. I've never been anywhere in France. So I say that to say that I'm not making this video because I am an expert in going to Paris. But I wanted to give you guys a glimpse into how I plan an international trip to a country that I've never been before, okay? Just a little sneak peek on how a home organizer kind of does things, right? So as you would expect, I'm pretty organized with my traveling as well. It's just, you know, it's just in my blood to be like that. But there is a caveat. I don't like a super tight itinerary on trips. I want to have some freedom and flexibility while I am traveling. So these tips are gonna give you some guidance, but it's, if you want a trip that's like step, you know, day one, do this, and it's a full day of exactly what to do, that's, that's not this video. This is kind of the preparation beforehand and what I do to do that, to, to get on that plane, to get you there, right? All right, so without further ado, number one, you guys know, I'm gonna be making my list ahead of time, making my list, checking it twice. So as soon as I know I'm going on a trip, I pretty much start a new note in my notes app, or you can write a, you know, on good old fashioned paper, in your, start taking notes, okay? So this is gonna be, I write down the days I'm gonna be gone. So if it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then just kind of a loose idea of what we're doing so that I can start making my packing list. And I can start looking into what do we need to make reservations for? So for example, this trip, we, like I said, we're going to Paris and we wanted to go to the Louvre and we found out they're closed like two of the days we're gonna be there. Thank goodness. You know, we also found out that you pretty much it's recommended to buy tickets in advance. So these are things that as you're kind of planning around what you're gonna do, and you may just, you may at first not write specifically what day you're gonna do all these things, especially if you're traveling with someone else, right? So you kind of have to compromise if you guys wanna do two different things, you know, so just start jotting down, okay, I wanna go to this restaurant, I wanna go to this museum, I wanna see this site. Start, make, start putting those things down and then you can fill in what day, time, slots they're gonna fit in, right? So for us, if we don't end up going to that museum, maybe we'll go to a different one. So then we're gonna just kind of fill that in. Another thing about going to Paris that we keep reading is a lot of these restaurants, you want to make reservations, which I actually haven't been somewhere recently where you do have to make a whole lot of reservations. I know that sounds silly, but, and again, this is Paris, there's tons of restaurants, so we're not stressed about it, but there are a couple places where we're like, yes, absolutely, we want to dine at this establishment. So let's figure out when we're gonna do that. The biggest thing I can give to you, the biggest tip or kind of piece of advice while making your schedule, and this may seem like a no brainer, but put your top priorities in first, okay? So for us, we're going to the Olympics. Those are our top priorities. You know, we're seeing some of those events. We're going to a water polo event. We're going to see beach volleyball. You know, so those are the biggest things we're doing. So we're gonna put those in, into our time slots and everything else will kind of work around that. So if going to see this exotic waterfall is top on your list, then that's what you put in, okay? That's what you're centering your plans around. But then it's just easier to kind of start planning, start really actually penciling things in that you're going to do, other places you're gonna go, restaurants, all of that, right? Okay, so then along with that, on that list, once I kind of start filling in what I'm gonna do on each day, and again, this is a loose itinerary. I, I don't want to go and have every minute of every hour mapped out and planned out. That is not how I personally like to travel. I like to talk to locals, 
what's, you know, get some ideas from them. What should we do? This is our first time, you know, those types of things instead of being so rigid that I can't stray from my plans. Again, you're going to have the things that are non-negotiable to you, the things that you have to do, but I love allowing some freedom and flexibility. I also don't like going on a trip and then feeling like I need a vacation from my vacation, right? So I don't want to be so worn out that I'm just spent when I get home. I want to get the most out of my trip, but I'm already so tired from working full time, having kids, having a family, right? That I, I also want to relax a little bit. I want to have a leisurely breakfast or, you know, have my leisurely cup of coffee in the middle of the afternoon. So that again, that's just how I like to travel. If you want that boom, boom, boom schedule and you want every minute planned out, that's fine. You can still use these tips. Okay. So then from that list, you will kind of start to figure out what you need to pack. Okay. So this list is going to help you with what you're doing, but then also what you're packing. So you may have Friday going to this restaurant. Okay. Well, it's a casual restaurant. You know, you need this outfit or Thursday, you're traveling comfy outfit for the plane, you know? So again, it just kind of helps you visualize your trip and know what to pack instead of just being like, okay, I'm going to a new place. This is the weather, put all things in there, you know, put, put just random stuff in your suitcase. Right. And speaking of weather, make sure you are checking the weather app. You know, you may have one idea of what the temperature is going to be there and you may be way off. So it's, it's just so easy to not, I mean, you can check it up until, you know, a couple days before you leave and you'll know what you need to pack. Are they having a, you know, a, a cold spell? Or are they hotter than heck of the season? Good things to know, things you have to know. <laughs> so this is also an interesting trip for me as far as what to pack and like what to wear, because I am setting up very intentional outfits. I'm going through my closet very intentionally, okay? The Parisian way of dressing is different than I normally dress in everyday life. So I wear a lot of oversized things. My style is pretty laid back and comfy. I'm not dressing up all the time. It's also hotter than heck here in Florida. And so, you know, I just, it's just different. Whereas when I think about going to Paris, it's very elegant, it's very elevated looks, very chic. That's what I'm trying to focus on. So usually when I would go on a trip, I would just, I, I would mix and match some outfits, kind of plan general, I'm gonna bring X amount of tops, X, X amount of pants, and then just kind of decide what I wanna wear. This trip is different. I'm planning, not to a T, but pretty close. This is what I wanna wear this day, this is what I'm gonna wear to this event, this is what I'm wearing to this dinner. Again, thank goodness I am planning out what we're doing each day so that I can kind of coordinate those outfits and it's easy peasy. And I know a lot of people that that do this like on, on their trips. I just haven't before because I liked the flexibility of being able to decide in the moment what I like to wear. But again, this is a little bit of a different trip for me, a little bit of a different style. So I just want to be more intentional. Another thing on the lines of clothing is I'm gonna be packing some hangers, okay? You can get foldable, portable hangers from Amazon, from wherever, or you can just pack some from your own closet. But we are staying in a hotel. I'm sharing the hotel room with who I'm staying with. I'm going with my sister-in-law. And often we just find that there's not enough hangers. So again, never done this before. And, but because I am kind of planning for some nicer outfits, some outfits that I really want to hang, I will be packing some hangers. You may hate this idea. Just little tips. I thought it was a good one. And you know, like I've said before with making your list, it's never too early to start doing this. As soon as you book a trip, just have it open because you will continuously be thinking of things that you need to bring and want a place to jot them down, right? That's why I find it easiest to do on my phone because I'll be driving when you're kind of, you know, not really actually thinking about something, but something will just pop into your mind. You're like, oh yes, I need to bring bug spray. Oh yes, I need to bring this, you know? Oh, I need to bring those sunglasses. Don't forget sunglasses. I hate when I do that, right? So it's just nice to like always have that list with you so that you can kind of bring, you know, 
so that you can write things down at a moment's notice, you know, anytime. The other thing I'm doing is loading up on vitamins. Okay, you may be laughing at this or you may think I'm just ridiculous, but often I wait like until the day or a couple days before I travel to like kind of boost up my, you know, immunity, <laughs> boost up my immune system and start taking those vitamins or I take them with me. But then it's like, it's almost like it's too late, right? So I'm like trying to just build up just take some more vitamins. You never know what you're going to come across when you travel. You know you're going to be around all sorts of germs. It does not hurt. Boost up on those vitamins, okay? Another thing that I'm doing because it is a new to me country is I am learning some of the language. My biggest fear of going to Paris and honestly why it has not been top on my list is because I've heard that they're rude to people who do not speak fluent French, okay? And I never want to travel somewhere and seem like that silly, dumb, whatever American, right? I want to try to fit in. I want to be a part of their culture, be respectful of their culture. And the language is a big part of that. So I have been using two different apps to learn French. I will let y'all know how it goes. Again, do I think I'm gonna be fluent in French by the time I go there? No, but also after talking to people that I have, that have gone, that love the city, and that don't speak fluent French, they have kind of made me feel more comfortable in that. They're like, if you try to get by, if you're attempting, like, you'll be fine. Just try. That's the biggest thing, I think, with a lot of these places. Now, there are some places where you go and you have to know the language. When we went to Argentina, if we did not speak any Spanish, where we went to Buenos Aires, it would have been difficult to get around, very difficult. We met a lot of people who did not speak any English. I know that Paris, especially for the Olympics, which is this huge event, you know, I know that a lot of people do speak English, but again, I never want to assume that. I want to try to fit in and at least attempt. And honestly, I was worried about like my brain capacity to like learn another language, but it, I've been having so much fun with it. It has brought me so much joy. So I will, I, I'm just studying each day, you know, I'm being a good little student. It's It's been really fun. So, all right, we know when we're going to, to other countries, we're gonna need different chargers. You're gonna need different adapters for your products. But one thing is you wanna make sure that it's a converter. It's an energy converter for the right type of energy. All right, so, so what do I mean by this? All right, when I went to Amsterdam, I was still breastfeeding. So when I was gone, I was using my pump because my kids were not with me. And I plugged, I had my converter. I plugged my, my pump into this converter, plugged it into the wall, fried the thing. Thank goodness it didn't mess up any, uh, didn't mess up the actual plug at our Airbnb, but it fried my pump. So what was I doing that whole day? Going around Amsterdam. <laughs> I was seeing a good tour of the city, trying to find another pump to buy. That was the correct voltage, the correct wattage, whatever, okay? So just think of those things. It, whatever you're gonna be plugging in, make sure your converter can handle that kind of power, okay? And again, I know I'm not saying this in any kind of scientific way, way. I, I don't sound like an electrician. I don't pretend to be one, but hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh, and one thing that I meant to mention at like the top of this video is check your passport. It, first of all, if you don't have a passport, you need to get one, right? And when they were backed up, they were saying that they could take up to six months to get a passport. So you want to do this as soon soon as you know you're going on a trip so that you don't run into like crunch time. My brother and sister-in-law, they were trying to get a passport for my niece. They couldn't get it in time. They had to drive like six hours to an actual like US passport, like official um, station to get it. Official, what am I trying to say? Office to get it expedited. So just don't run into that. The other thing is go ahead and put the date that your passport is, is going to expire, put that in your calendar, put it six months, eight months in advance so that you know when you have to renew it, you're gonna be way ahead of time so that you're not booking a trip and like 
Oh crap, it's expired, okay? So that's just a little tidbit. Always wanna check check your country's website and check the country you're going to, their website, their um, any kind of travel info, if you will, warnings or alerts that you need to know about should be on there. So if there is something you need as far as like a shot or something to be aware of, or they're not letting tourists in, or you can only stay for so long, you know, all these different things, or you need a visa, just check those websites. They will have all that information so you know ahead of time. Heaven forbid you get somewhere and it's like, ah, you know, I didn't know that this is gonna happen, right? So that is how I'm preparing. Again, the biggest thing is making that list, planning it out. And hear me when I say this, it does not have to be down to a T. Make it as detailed as you want, but it's just enough to where you can kind of get your packing list from it so that you're not overpacking, you're not getting there and having the wrong things, you know, any of that. Boost up your immunity with <laughs> with your vitamins. Try to learn the language. Those are some of my biggest tips. And just plan, start as far out as you can. You know, again, you don't wanna get the day before and think, oh my gosh, I didn't prepare for any of this. So the sooner you start planning for something, the less likely of forgetting something. And well, you all, everyone has that moment, right? You're driving to the airport, someone's driving you, whatever. And you're like, oh, I know I forgot something. I know I forgot something. And don't worry, it happens to me too. And I am very much a planner. So it's natural, it's COVID. You probably didn't. And if you did, the thing I always remind myself is, at least for trips like this, I'm not going to a third world country. I can find something there if need be, but you don't want to get in that situation. And there will be a time where I may be going to a third world country, so I can't say that. <laughs> All right, if you have been to Paris and there are you have recommendations of things to do or things to very much avoid, I would love to hear them in the comments. So let me know, or are you going on another trip? Let me know where you're going. I'm so excited for you. All right, talk to you soon.